everyone and welcome to my language and history channel. I am Irina. I am a historian with a PhD in Nordic studies as well as a language and history teacher. And this is my brand new channel uh, with which I hope to bring good content and interesting information in the YouTube jungle. Thank you so much for supporting me. Uh, please consider if you haven't done it already to like and subscribe to my channel. Um, in this video, I would like to discuss with you something that I really find bothersome because it is still a pretty common thing in contemporary depictions of Vikings in popular culture, which is drinking from skulls, drinking from the skulls of your enemy. So this really militaristic, hyper-masculine image of uh, bravery and um, uh, gore, um, the question is, did they really do that? And the answer is no. No, they did not. They drank from much more, uh, much more, yeah, let's say, uh, I wouldn't say uninteresting, but I would say uh, mundane things such as horns. Um, there were many discoveries of horns, however, more discoveries of fittings for these horns, like bronze fittings used to, um, uh, to keep the horn. Um, they also drank from goblets, like regular goblets, cups, uh, either made out of wood um, or made out of glass crystal. So this was also very important. Um, chieftains, magnates, um, would have access to, to glass by means of trade and they would also use them in ceremonial drinking. So ceremonial drinking was indeed a very big thing in um, um, what we may deem as the mead halls. Um, it, it, is, it was not only a thing related to the consumption of uh, food and of drinks, it also had to do with, um, um, you know, receiving rewards or receiving uh, honors or boasting about stuff you did in battle um, or um, getting into a new political alliance. So it, it was pretty much related to um, this idea of establishing a communal um, identity. And these cups that they use, the very regular wood or crystal cups, um, they were also pledging cups. So they used to, um, to make a vow, to make an oath on them, um, and then dedicate that drink to either a god or the king or an ancestor. And this was a very important uh, gesture, actually, because it was... Uh, morally binding. So if, if you vowed on a cup, you were supposed to uh, respect that vow, no matter how uh, strange or uh, weird it was. Um, these pledging cups or these uh, ceremonies were also associated with um, um, animal sacrifices and they could also occur. Um, and they, they often occurred, uh, for example, in order to uh, ensure good crops. So the fertility of the land. Um, they were also popular with um, um, funeral feasts. Yeah, so to celebrate someone who uh, had been slain. There is enough evidence to uh, make us believe that uh, this, these drinking festivities were, uh, were seasonal and they were very important as a binding element in uh, this society. However, like I said, they did not use skulls. Um, this misunderstanding comes from a uh, translation, actually. This comes from a 16th century translation um, of a yeah, scholar, librarian uh, called Ulevon, who translated in Latin uh, a passage from um, the skaldic poem uh, Krokmol, um, the, or the last words of Ragnar Lothbrok, um, and at some point, so it is believed that these are, were some verses that the semi-legendary um, leader wrote to his, uh, to his wife. And um, uh, at some point he uses the phrase, or the author uses the phrase, or biugvidum hausa, or biugvidum hausa. So this is a metaphor or as we call it uh, when we talk about old norse poetry a kenning 
this is this was a very elaborate metaphor um, and uh, it basically means out of the curved branches of skulls the curved branches of skulls so it's actually a kenning for horns because um, the drinking horns could also be made out of horns like cattle horns deer horns and so on but the 16th century author did not grasp uh, this metaphor because these kennings uh, are really complicated actually so you need to have a um, very well developed vocabulary and also a very good understanding of certain um, um, mythological for example um, um, stories or an, an understanding of uh, what you can mix with what. So if, if you did not have this insight into Old Norse poetry, it was impossible to understand it. But yeah, this means, uh, this refers to uh, the actual material that you, you, you made these horns of. Uh, and he translated it as ex cranis eorum quos occiderant. So out of the skulls of those who died. So this caused a severe misunderstanding and it, it is still used nowadays, probably less often than before, but it is still used in um, a lot of contexts about um, Vikings to show how, I don't know, how, how badass they were. But um, it's, it's a really bad example <laughs> to show that. Um, it might also have to do with a very common term for toasting with Scandinavians, skål. Uh, skull because it sounds like skull and uh, the curious thing is in fact that the uh, original word um, and actually um, also nowadays in Scandinavian languages uh, it meant bowl like skull a bowl of something a bowl of drink or a bowl of food and it comes from the same root as scully which is a bold uh, hairless head so maybe this um, similarity might have also um, uh, contributed to this uh, misunderstanding over time. Um, well, Vikings, so did, they did not drink uh, from the skulls of their enemies. However, other peoples did. So it was actually a pretty common practice throughout um, our history. Um, and perhaps the most famous example is one from the 5th century BC from Herodotus, who tells us a lot of gruesome things about the Scythians. So let's see in, uh, I think it's book four of histories. Yeah, exactly. So let me quote a little bit from these very gruesome details that he has here. Um, whether it is true or not, um, he might have made it up. I mean, he is Herodotus. He made a lot of things up. Uh, however, I do know that there have been some archaeological findings on uh, certain Russian sites that would suggest that maybe he didn't make it up altogether. But either way, what he says is more realistic than Vikings drinking from the skulls of their enemies. So uh, about Scythians, they, he says the following that uh, in what concerns war their customs are the following the Scythian soldier drinks the blood of the first man he overthrows in battle whatever number he slays he cuts off all their heads carries them to the king since he is thus entitled to a share of the booty whereto he forfeits all claim if he does not produce a head in order to strip the skull of its covering he makes a cut round the head above the ears and laying hold of the skull shakes the skull out Ooh. Then with uh, the rib of an ox, he scrapes the skull clean of flesh, this is really detailed, and softening it by rubbing between the hands, uses it thenceforth as a napkin. The skiff is proud of these sculps and hangs them from his bridal rein. The greater the number of such napkins that a man can show, the more highly he is esteemed among them. Okay, and then he goes on to say, oh yes. The skulls of their enemies, not indeed of all, but of those whom they most detest, they treat as follows. Having sawn off the portion below the eyebrows and cleaned out the inside, they cover the outside with leather. When a man is poor, this is all that uh, he does. But if he is rich, he also lines the inside with gold. In either case, uh, the skull is used as a drinking cup. All right, so this is what Herodotus tells us. 
Um, we also have examples that uh, bring us call closer to home, so closer to the um, Nordic slash Germanic culture. Um, we have an episode about a battle between Gepids and Lombards um, in the 6th century. So these were uh, Germanic tribes. Um, they were fighting in former uh, Byzantine territories. Um, we have uh, the name of a Gepid king, uh, Cunimund. He has a conflict with the Lombards um, led by Alboin. And uh, Byzantines are also involved because they want the town of Sirmium, which was uh, under the control of the Gepids. Either way, um, the Lombards, um, they uh, end up making an alliance with a, um, an ethnic group from Asia this time, with the uh, Avars, and uh, they defeat the Gepids. And uh, the Chronicle Paul, the deacon, tells us that uh, Alboin, the leader of the Lombards, um, had uh, the skull of Cunimund turned into a drinking cup. And he was also pretty much um, um, of a scoundrel because he forced the daughter of Cunimund, Rosamund, to drink from uh, to drink for, from her father's skull, actually. Um, but you know we are in the Germanic world, and um, uh, this does not um, uh, get away unpunished because she will get involved into a plot uh, that will have Alboin killed. Um, other examples include um, later on in the 9th century, for example, we have Theophanes the Confessor and uh, Johannes Zonaras who tell us about the Bulgarian Han Krum, who shapes a drinking cup out of the skull of uh, Nikephoros I. And the Russian primary chronicle tells us about the 10th century that we have a Pechenegg uh, leader, a uh, Khan, who uh, shapes a drinking um, a drinking uh, device out of Sviatoslav's uh, skull, um, and uh, he does this actually as a compliment. He drinks from this um, uh, skull together with his wife, and he says that he wishes that their son uh, were as brave as the leader, uh, the Slavic leader that he uh, slew. Um, all right, so as you can see in literature, we do have examples which actually confirm the use of uh, skull cups. Um, with regard to archaeology, this is also interesting. Um, we have, um, so apart from the uh, Russian sites that um, were related to the Scythians, uh, we also have, for example, um, um, evidence from way back from the Magdalenian culture, so 15,000 years ago. Um, it is the so-called Cheddar Cave in Somerset in um, England, and um, here archaeologists retrieved some very interesting findings, uh, skulls with um, slice marks, with uh, cut marks, with abrasions, uh, which suggest that they might have deliberately fashioned the skulls uh, into cups. And what's even more gruesome than that, and more disgusting, is the fact that the preservation of the cranial vault suggests that um, from these skulls they might have actually feasted on the brains. So probably related to some cannibalistic practices which may or may not have had a religious uh, symbolism as well. Okay, so there you go. A few details on this uh, uh, historical tradition of drinking from skulls. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, Vikings don't uh, qualify. Um, they only drank from uh, Bragarful. Bragarful is the term used in Old Norse for, um, for a drinking cup, just a regular drinking cup, or a toasting memorial cup. Um, so, uh, yeah, I uh, hope that we uh, soon sometime maybe we'll get rid of this uh, very ridiculous image of Norsemen drinking from skulls. There are more images that we can use to show how badass they were without resorting to um, these um, very overused myths. 
Thank you very much for watching. Uh, take care and see you next time. If you enjoyed it and you want me to make more videos about such topics, like and subscribe and please also visit my page. Thanks a lot. See you soon.